Hello everyone and welcome to a video tutorial on using Google applications, Google Apps tools for design. And as you can see from the screen, we're going to be using uh, a design for Bruno Mars uh, Instagram post is actually what we're going to be doing. Uh, and we're doing Bruno Mars well. Yep. That's right, I'm a fan. So we're using Bruno Mars as an example. Um, so what we're gonna look at here is ways to use Google Drawings to be able to post for social media. Now we're gonna pick Instagram as an example, but this can be used for more than just Instagram. You can actually use this for, uh, of course, Twitter, Facebook, uh, all the popular social media tools that uh, take uh, photographs or um, uh, graphics, basically PNG or JPEG files. Um, so the very first thing we need to actually do is set up our artboard. Um, Google Drawings, as well as other Google tools, will come in their basic uh, standard dimension for the size, and that doesn't necessarily play well when you get to um, your Instagram account. So for example, I'm gonna pull up my Instagram account here. If you look at my second picture, you can see that um, the zebra is actually cut off. And so I'm gonna pull open this picture so you can see. This is a full picture. So when people are viewing the images on Instagram, if you're looking at the, the thread, it comes out okay. But if you actually look at somebody's uh, profile like this, then you can tell that the image has been cropped off. If you want your image to fit perfectly into the square and to look um, basically the entire image to look as it should appear on both this view as well as the open view when you actually open on the on the open the post, then what you want to do is actually design to the size. So an example of that would be like this bird here, the hummingbird. So this particular image is positioned already at the size of the actual, um, both the square as well as um, the, um, the dimension for the thread feature. And so what you wanna do is design for that. And for that, I have a resource for you. Um, I found this really great spreadsheet called Always Up to Date Social Media Images. And at the bottom, you'll see some uh, tab options and one of them is for Instagram, but you can see there's Twitter on there, Facebook, et cetera. And according to this and everything else that's out there and according to Instagram, you want to uh, design your photos and your uh, graphics and images to uh, 1080 by 1080 pixels. So coming back to our design that, uh, that we're gonna start from scratch, uh, we're gonna go ahead and change the file size. So we're gonna go to File, and then page setup to be able to change that. So this is typical, it'll be at its standard format. We're gonna change that to customize and we need to change from inches to pixels. And again, that is 1080 by 1080. So let's go ahead and make those changes and click OK. Now this is the size that will perfectly fit within that box. So that was our first change uh, right off the bat, okay? So next thing we're gonna do is find an image, right? And so for the, the purpose of this, like I said, we're using uh, Bruno Mars as an example. And so it's as simple as going uh, to the internet and doing an image search. So I know all of you are probably familiar with that. But I do want to point out one thing that's going to be crucial in this example for us to actually be able to do something with the image. And that's to be able to have a transparent background, which is what you see in the example that I've searched for here. Because when you don't have a transparent background, then you end up with that darn little white box that we're just not a fan of, right? So here's what you're going to do. You just open up a tab in Chrome. And uh, we're going to do a search for uh, Bruno Mars. And we're going to go looking for pictures like you normally would. So we do the search and we're going to change this to images. And then once you get to the image um, uh, search result, like you see here, you're going to click on the button that says tools and that drop down a menu of options that you have. And we're going to change the color to transparent. And what that basically does is it's going to give you search results that don't have the white bounding box around it. So all of these images that are um, on here, um, wouldn't have that, which is nice because now we can design things in the background of that particular image. So let's take, for example, we looked at this picture here. I can tell it's transparent because it has that grid in the background uh, that you'd normally find like when you're using Adobe products or other vector art um, uh, or photography uh, programs that it gives you sort of that grid letting you know there's no actual background in that image. So that's kind of something you might want to look for uh, when you pull up those images. So you can scroll through and find the image that you would like. Um, and again, you're just looking for those transparent backgrounds. 
Another really cool thing um, and a little tip here that I like about working with Google products because you are uh, online, you go directly online and everything works online. Um, you can actually just drag these photos in. I don't have to right click, save it or copy it or anything like that. Instead, I'm just going to grab the image and then drag it all the way up to the tab that has the uh, the drawing that we're actually using. So this is our Google drawing here. And then I just bring it right back down. So I never let it go. I just bring it right back down onto the canvas and now I can actually let it go. And it's, it's gonna drop the image right into my canvas, which is really nice. So you can see that there it is. Um, and you can also see, you know, obviously we've got that grid background on our canvas because it's exactly uh, what we said earlier about it being transparent. There's nothing there. And so now our image, which I'm going to size by holding my shift key down and then stretching it out there and bring this down to the bottom there and make this a little bit bigger. We can even go off the canvas and he still looks good. No, uh, no pixelation yet. So it's got good quality. So I know this is a good shot. All right, so now that I've done that, I can decide to do things like let's add a background. So we're gonna do a shape um, and we're gonna do this square. And I'm basically just gonna fill the entire canvas here. And uh, we're gonna change this to a different color. Now, um, ha being a fan of Bruno Mars, I know that he's used certain colors for his current um, uh, tour. And so we could do a purple, a blue, a green, um, yellow, or a red. Those have been sort of his colors for um, for this tour. So we're going to go kind of like with a, a kind of yellow like this. And we're going to take away the um, outline. Uh, we, we don't want to align around the box there. So I'm going to go transparent. And then there's my, um, my box. Now, if you look at this, um, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. See how I didn't quite get up to the edge? Sometimes, you know, um, looking at it from a distance is a little hard to tell. So I'd like to use that zoom feature to be able to do that. And we can just stretch this little guy right back out to make sure that it's all the way over to the corner. And let's double check and make sure that our other corner is correct. And it looks like what I ended up doing was going too far on this side um, and not far enough on the other end. So we want to make sure it's all the way to the end because when we export this, um, uh, what's going to happen is is Google Drawings uh, is going to compress it down and, and then export it, but all the way to the edges. And so if you didn't go all the way to the edge, you're going to end up with a white line, which is not something we want, right? Okay, so we've got our box, but obviously we don't want our box on top of our image. So a simple select and right click gives you some uh, menu options where we're then going to go to order and we're going to say send to back, that way it is in the very back um, and then the photo will pop up at the front. So send it back and there is our photo in the front, which is awesome. All right, it's looking good. So the next thing we wanna do is add some text. Um, so we are gonna go to, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go um, back to the web. And another resource that I wanted to share with you is uh, fonts.google.com. Uh, another great database that Google has put together for us, aside from from you know giving us all information in one place in, in, on Google.com, they've also generated these really amazing databases. And this one for Google Fonts allows you to find like fonts um, that are out there that you can use, uh, which is great. Uh, the use for these is meant to be personal. Um, some of these are completely sort of open source that you can use them on anything, but some of them might have some restrictions. So definitely watch out for that. Um, so all I have to do is just, you know, sort of uh, sift through here until I find, you know, like the font that I want to use. Um, there's there's a lot of different variations of things you'll find on here from serif fonts to sans serif fonts, um, sort of the playful fun, like handwriting styles or, you know, I've even found some on here that are um, that look like uh, video game fonts. So there's lots of really cool things in here um, that you'll find. And what's cool about this is that it's a simple click of one button and it's gonna be added to your Google font list, which is really cool. If you haven't already noticed, there's like all these little plus signs right next to each of those font families. And that's the button you're gonna click and it's that simple. So once you find a font you like, it's as simple as click clicking that little button there. So you would say, plus that font, right? And so this is the font that I would want to use. And uh, it starts um, adding those to your Google account. And you can just keep sifting through and finding and adding any fonts that you might like to use. And they're going to instantly be available in your, um, in your Google account. So let's say, um, 
let's say those were the fonts that I wanted. So now I'm going to go back to my drawing. So let's take a look here. We're going we're gonna to focus on this one here and use this one as an example, monotone. So we're going to go back to our file and let's go ahead and grab a text box. And, uh, and of course, we're going to put in his name. So we're going to put in Bruno. And uh, we're going to go look for that monotone uh, font. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here and say more fonts. And uh, I'm just going to do a search for it. So monotone, um, which is the one that we wanted. There it is. So I simply select it um, and then click on OK. And it then becomes available um, as a font that I would find in my library of fonts now. So I'm just going to scroll down. And there it is. So I'm going to select it. And in this case, of course, it is uh, too small. So we need to definitely make it bigger. So let's start customizing that a little bit. And of course, we can change the color on these fonts to whatever we'd like. So there we go. I might actually want to go just a little bit uh, bigger than that. Let's go six. stretch that out. All right. So you can see kind of where we're headed there um, with this particular um, image. So we're going to go ahead and add his last name really quick, just so you can see um, how this is all going to come together. I'm loving it. Ah, excellent. All right. And this actually, this font's actually really close to one of the ones that he used during the time that um, uh, one of his earlier albums that had come out and um, that's more in line with the, this picture as well. So that's looking good. All right. So obviously you can continue to design and change this up, but uh, I do want to point out that once you're done, there is one last step that you have to do. And that is simply to go to file and you're going to select download as, and you can always download as a JPEG or a PNG. Either of those two files are access, acceptable in Instagram, um, as well as other social media. So you could uh, select either one. Uh, usually PNGs are the ones with transparent backgrounds, but here you don't necessarily have to worry about that. So all we'd have to do here is just download. So I'm just going to say PNG and it's going to download to my download files. So we're going to let it do that. I'm going to come over to my downloads so I can go ahead and uh, find this particular file. So um, it's just currently downloading still, but it'll become available. There it is. Um, and uh, this is pretty much the end result. So now you've got a perfectly sized image to be able to post to your uh, Instagram account. Hope you guys uh, like this video tutorial and uh, hopefully you picked up some tips on being able to use drawings for design. All right.